Hey, what's up? I'm Rachel Starr, and this is another of my answering uh, questions videos to ask a schizophrenic. So this is actually, I think, the video I got the most um, questions, especially like sent to me an email. I was just, my email has gotten flooded. Um, I will actually respond to each one of them, but it's just going to take a while because my reading and writing, it's rough. It took me a while just to make it through them all. Anyway, so let's start off here with a pretty common one. What is a schizophrenic? So um, basically, I'm going to give you the quick version. I have a mental disorder. That means my brain thinks differently, as does other people with mental disorders. Um, it's nothing like what you've seen in the movies or TV shows. It just means pretty much disorder means things not in order. So mentally, my brain doesn't work the same way as, let's say, a normal person. That's all it is. Uh, to learn out more about schizophrenics, like Google it. You know, Google schizophrenia, uh, mental disorders, bipolar, like ones, depression, things like that. Like, educate yourself because, you know, you're going to come across, like, people in life. I think everybody, to a degree, is at some point going to have a little bit of psychosis. I mean, you go through a bad breakup, it's going to make you a little bit crazy. Um, but just things like that. So be aware and understand that it's really not that big a deal. <laughs> All right. No. So jumping in here, how to make friends. This has always been a struggle for me. Um, especially like in school, I was very lucky that I had like a little group, grouping of friends, um, but I never really felt like I fit in anywhere and I never really had, I guess, like you would say, like a best friend. Um, as I've gotten older, the easiest thing I've found to make friends is part-time jobs. Seriously, get a part-time job. It's the best way to get you like out and socializing with different people that you probably wouldn't meet otherwise. Um, a lot of my like really great friends I have today, pretty much all of them came through different part-time jobs I was working. Um, I worked at like a baseball stadium and I've met a lot of awesome people from different gyms I've worked at and just kind of getting yourself out there. Also joining like social clubs, singles clubs, um, find something like you're interested in. Whatever it is, um, try different churches, whether you're, I always tell people this, like whether you're religious or not, like try, especially like these big churches with lots of stuff going on. He'll be like, Rachel, I don't believe what they're into. And I'm like, I don't think a lot of them do either. I don't know. But yeah, get out there and try, you know, some different social things, but part-time jobs. That's been like my key one. I know I'm going to get so much flack over that comment about the churches. Sorry. Motivation. And... Whew. Um, I have a really hard time with motivation. Sometimes getting up is is a struggle. The one thing that keeps me on trap trap on track is having like a job to go to and a dog. Um, Twinkle like wiggles awake, and I can feel her wiggling, and she kind of you know if I don't get her out of the bed, she's gonna pee in it. So that's a really good motivator to get me out of bed. Um, she's been kind of my little rock the past I don't know how long I've had her, but like five, six, seven years. I'm not sure. Um, but she's definitely been a good motivator to get me out having to at least walk her and things like that. And then, yeah, working. I don't care if you only work like two days a week. That's two days that's going to get you up and out of bed. <sighs> Negative thinking about body image. That one's so good, whether, you know, you're dealing with someone with a mental disorder or not. I definitely, I, I struggle constantly with my body image. Um... I can't look in mirrors very long. I gotta stay away from scales. I get obsessed if I step on a scale kind of thing. Um, I don't really know what to tell you on that one. I think it, it depends on what your issue is. I'd say the most common one obviously is being overweight and that's like what I struggle with. And a lot of it is you just can't be too hard on yourself. Um, and that's something I need to practice what I preach because I, I get so upset with myself and I'm constantly dieting, exercising and um, stressing out about it so I think everything in moderation that's what I say what I do is different and I'm working on it how do you identify delusional or odd thoughts um, I'm gonna assume that like it's different for everybody but for me the biggest thing that I notice is I start like kind of thinking and talking in third person um, I'll actually be like Rachel act normal that's what's kind of like my common thing is me telling myself to act normal that means I'm like oh crap that means something is not normal um, and usually I start to digress from there and, um, I'll just start to ha have my thoughts racing. I'll get extremely obsessive. Um, I'll just like lock on to like just crazy things. So for me, but the, yeah, for me, the number one thing is I start like thinking or talking in third person and that's like, okay, crap, things are about to go downhill. We gotta, gotta wrap this up. <laughs> um, what kind of schizophrenia do you have? 
Good question. Um, so I'm not, I'm not a psychology major or anything like that, but to give you the quick version of what I understand is there used to be different types of schizophrenia. And from my understanding now, it's just schizophrenia because so many people fit into multiple categories and stuff like that. Um, I had testing done when I was 21, 22, and it said paranoid schizophrenic. So yes, paranoid was the classification they put me in. And again, I fit into the classification of multiple different ones, so. Mm. Oh no. Okay, how do I control myself when I'm hallucinating? Oh man. Um, depends on how sick I am. If I'm just, a, I mean, I hallucinate like every day somehow and I just kind of ignore it. Like, I just kind of, oh, I like identify. That's probably a hallucination. Do I need to react? Sometimes I react without thinking. Eh. Um, when it gets really bad, I, I can't control myself. So what happens is before I get really bad, I identify those signs. Again, the biggest one as I start talking in third person in my head. Um, and that means I need to get home and get help. Usually when that happens, um, I go ahead and let my parents know, uh, family know and be like, hey, I'm getting really, really sick. And they'll also know, I live at home. Um, I actually moved back home, I guess almost a year ago because of, it just wasn't, me being by myself had gotten um, really, really bad. And just, it kind of worked out better. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna come home for a little bit. So this has been working. I feel like it's definitely made my safety net stronger. So I know that's not much help to those out there who are like, well, Rachel, I don't got anybody. I know, so you might have to like, find some way, whether it's a friend you can let know, hey, you know, text them, I'm getting sick, you know, maybe call, check, stop by if you can, something like that. Um, how do I help a friend with schizophrenia? The biggest thing if you're helping someone with schizophrenia or like disorder is to be understanding. Um, they're going to freak out a lot. They're gonna push things too far. They're gonna think things happen that might not have, or things that did happen, they'll like um, make it go differently in their head and get scared about it. Think they've ruined everything. Just be understanding and just be a good friend to them. That's all I can say. Um, take each thing as it comes and just be understanding that, yeah, sometimes they're gonna get a little out of control. Um, how can I make my friend realize that they have a problem? You cannot make anyone realize that they're sick. Um, when it comes to realizing you have a mental disorder, that's a really, really big thought to go through and it's very, very scary. Um, I'm sure they know on some level that something's wrong, but they might not realize to what degree and you cannot force that. I'd say like, bring it up talk to them if they're at danger of hurting themselves or others then that could be a situation you need to talk to their family or like yeah if things get bad enough call the police if they're gonna hurt themselves or others you need to go ahead and get the police involved um, but if we're not at that point hopefully um, the best you can do is talk to them about it and hope they'll listen and just keep being their friend <sighs> what types of problems did you have as a child Dude, I was a crazy little kid. Now, I was, I think I looked normal. I assume so, I don't know. But um, I hallucinated, like growing up, I saw like monsters all the time, but I thought like all kids did. Like you heard monsters in your closet, monster under your bed. I like saw them. So I just thought that's what everyone was talking about. And then we went to church all the time and they always talked about demons and angels. So I just thought I was seeing a bunch of demons. I don't know why I never saw angels. Jerks. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. I don't really think my childhood was hard. It got really hard come like middle school and high school. That was really hard. Um, I think it was just my brain kind of, kind of just starting to go crazy. And then when I hit around um, 17, 18, it got really, really bad. Or I think it just like was tearing apart on the inside and just nothing was lining up. How do I raise a child with mental problems? Man, I'm gonna say like you raise any other child, one day at a time. Uh, one day at a time, just take it easy. 
I think what's really cool is that we live in like a day and age where um, I guess things don't have to be so so standardized. I don't know if that's the word I'm looking for, but it, it, you have so many more options now. I think. Um, than when I was little, because I think about things like internet school, stuff, I mean, there's always homeschooling, but it was like, mm, mm. Um, but there's other things like internet school, things like that, um, and just other programs, I think, that are available to people, like, who just aren't freakishly rich, you know, it's not like, oh, well, it's either a public school or private school, um, I just think there's a whole lot more options that you can go to, and every kid's different, mental disorder or not, so... If your child's having troubles, I would look into programs like that that you think they can help. And if they need to be taken out of school for like a year or two, so what? Take them out of school for a year or two. In the big scheme of things, it's not that big a deal. Um, in general, Rachel, how are you doing? Thank you so much for asking. You guys are nice. Um, ups and downs. <laughs> That's always my response. People ask me, how are you doing right now? Ups and downs. There's good days, there's bad days, there's good hours, there's bad hours, ups and downs. I'm trying, y'all. <laughs> oh, goodness. What made your insomnia go away? I, I don't, I hate when people ask this because my answer is ECT. Um, I had really bad insomnia and the best thing that knocked it out of the park was my electroconvulsive therapy. Something about that, whenever I had it, it seemed to take away my really bad insomnia. I might still have problems sleeping and stuff, and I have to stay on a very like regimented, I take melatonin every night. Um, if I haven't slept or have had sleeping problems for like two or three days straight, I have to take like a Tylenol PM or something. Luckily, I'm at, not at a point where I need anything stronger than that, but um, I have to get sleep. That's like the number one thing when it comes to taking care of my schizophrenia. If I go more than two days without sleep or bad sleep, I start to deteriorate mentally so quickly. Um, as I've gotten older, it's something I can't play around with. I just recently had to go to Atlanta and I pushed myself. I knew better, but I pushed myself. Because um, I left like at 3 a.m., had to then drive, and I was supposed to be on set at like 10, and they stretched it and they were like, oh no, we're not gonna be on set till three. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. So then I had to kill time. Um, I slept in my car, which obviously is not good. Um, so then we didn't get done with set till midnight and at that point I hated to get a hotel just because I don't want to spend money on a hotel for a few hours. <laughs> so then I just was like, no, I'll just drive on high. And it just came this whole thing and I got really, really sick then for the next week. Um, when I should have just got a hotel, but I didn't. So whatever. Yeah. Um, how do I deal with stuff like that? Once the insomnia starts, um, like I said, if it's more than two days, that I've had bad sleep, I have got to just take some Tylenol PM or something and get knocked out because um, it's going to be really bad. Rachel, what are your thoughts on schizo slash psychosis versus spiritual experience? I don't know. I, I don't know. Um, those of you who've um, seen my other videos and not scroll through my uh, mental health collection, and I have a video about um, an exorcism I was put through because um, I went to like this Christian school kind of thing. Um, I'm, I don't think all spiritual experiences are hallucinations and mental disorders, and I don't think all hallucinations are spiritual ex experiences. I think if you are aware that you have schizophrenia or a like disorder, then um, God or anything else telling you what to do is probably probably a scary thing. Um, and I would say, you know, treat it like a grain of salt. Um, you know, <sighs> basically what I believe is this, um, what Jesus said were the two greatest commandments. Love God, love people. So I test everything in my mind against that, and that's just like moral stuff. That, that doesn't have to be a Christian thing. That could be an anything thing. You know, care about people and care about something bigger than yourself, whatever you think that is, whether it's God or whether it's just the environment or whether it's people as a whole taking care of people, whatever. Just don't be a selfish little jerk. Um, it's just, it's good for everybody if you're not. 
and yourself. <laughs> um, but I really don't know what else to say on that. I think that's a dangerous road if you think you're talking with God. Um, I don't, I don't, the minute someone tells me God told them to do anything, I get really suspicious. <laughs> when we're talking about if people being crazy or not, I'm like, mm. it's like God told me to run for president. Mm, I'm not going to vote for you just because you said that. I feel like that means bad decision making skills. <laughs> right off the bat, you've shown me you have bad decision making skills. <laughs> I don't know, anyway. Um, do you believe, oh yeah, so do I believe that you, they can coexist, spiritual experiences, or is it all schizophrenia? I don't know still. <laughs> um, I believe they can coexist, sure. Sure. I do that. I've had some experiences that I'm like, oh wow, high five Jesus. And, you know, yeah. <clears throat> when should you get ECT, electroconvulsive therapy? Um, understand, this is, it's, it's intense to go through ECT. I do think still that it is a last, a last resort kind of thing. Um, I got brain damage from it. I would get it again. But, yeah, it's, it's pretty intense. I think when you're at the, 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 when you're at the place of, I'm going to hurt myself or kill myself or something and I need something to go on then you should consider ECT after you've tried a lot of other options um, I like this one Rachel do you like to dance and does it make it worse <laughs> um, yes I like to dance um, like like club dancing not like ballet um, yeah like me and my friends go out dancing now and then I wish we went out more it's just work schedules juggling um, but yeah, I love to go out like dancing with my friends, just have like a fun time. It does not make my schizophrenia affected at all. I don't think it's ever affected it at all. Um, let's see here. How do you stop cutting? So self-harm, self-mutilation, anything where it's cutting, hitting yourself, things like that. Take it day by day. You're not allowed to punish yourself. You know what? You don't need to. You're going to screw up. You're going to make mistakes. That's life. It goes on. Learn from them. Don't punish yourself over it. You are beautiful. Don't hurt yourself. Just learn from it and become someone stronger. You don't need to carry the scars around. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. How do you deal with suicidal thoughts? Um... I still get suicidal thoughts. Uh, to kind of tie in the suicidal and the cutting thing, um, I did used to self-harm really bad and it was really just like my brain was exploding in my head and a lot of it was like feeling like I needed to punish myself. But um, I can say that it's been years since I've like really, really hurt myself and I'm proud of that. And I think like you just practice one day at a time and then suddenly you realize, hey, it's been a month, it's been a year. It's been a few years. Like, I just realized, hey, it's been a few years. Um, same thing with suicidal thoughts. I distract myself and move away from them. So I haven't had any attempts or anything in, like, years upon years. Just distract yourself. Take it one day at a time, minute by minute, hour by hour, if you have to. <laughs> Sorry, it's getting dark, so I adjusted the lighting because this video is taking forever. <laughs> oh, and I lost my page. Well, now you're going to wait a second. Nope, now you're just gonna write more. Alrighty. So, Rachel, what do your monsters look like? Uh, I mean, I have different ones. They're not like anything I can like kind of describe to you. Some of them are just distorted, distorted people. Me distorted when I look in the mirror. Um. I don't know what to tell you. It's not like any um, horror movie I've ever seen. The closest, so the closest kind of uh, movie-wise you can see to what I see, Coraline. Coraline, um, it's a kid's movie, like the claymation movie. Um, and a lot of the monsters she sees in the, in the world with the other mom, um, that's like, it's like what I see, where they start, where her world starts to deteriorate, that, that's it. It's really just, I'd say the closest. Um, the other really good example was the movie I talked about in another video recently, the, um, It's a Beautiful Day, It's Gonna Be a Beautiful Day, something like that. Yeah, that one was very close on, too. And to end this, 
What is your favorite thing about being a schizophrenic? <laughs> My favorite thing about being a schizophrenic. I think that it helps me think differently. Um, I do think I see the world a little bit differently. Um, I know I don't, I guess, I could definitely tell a lot of times like my thought patterns aren't the same as people. Like when I'm in groups and they're talking and like, I'll like just think about things differently. Um, I think it also makes me more creative. I'm constantly coming up with ideas and I just wish I had the energy to run after all of them, but I don't. Just like I kind of have to be like, okay, this is what I can do. Um, Thank you for asking. I guess to end this in a super long video. Um, if you have schizophrenia or a like disorder or are worried about you do, first thing, understand, it's not that big a deal. Okay? It really is not that big a deal. Yeah, it's gonna take some adjustment and learning how to deal with it, but that's like anything. Okay, it's like if you break your arm, you're gonna have to learn to adjust. And yeah, it's kind of annoying to adjust. Okay, but you'll be fine. You're not broken, you're not sick. Your brain just works a little bit differently and that's okay. And if you have a child or a friend or whatever loved one with schizophrenia, just be understanding and help them know that it's okay. You know, the world's gonna keep turning and you're gonna have some bad days. But you're, you, all you need to do is just keep pushing because you're also gonna have some really good days. You're gonna have, like I said, some bad hours and some good hours. Push through the bad and enjoy the good. I'm Rachel Starr. Thank you for watching, if you made it this far.